Hello again, everybody. I'm Chuck Caton with Coach Pete, and it's time to live happy here on the Live Happy Show. And uh, we are uh, bringing you this particular program from the Tobacco Road Sports Cafe, one of three fabulous locations in the Triangle, but we happen to be uh, here in Raleigh, Coach, and uh, good to have... It's my uh, favorite one, Chuck. This place it, right here. Absolutely, and we're going to be talking a little bit about craft beers yeah. instead of uh, wine this week. My second favorite tobacco road is at the Durham Bulls ballpark, by the way. Absolutely. Yeah, They're in left field yeah. over there, and uh, we will be talking to the proprietor, uh, one of the three brothers uh, who uh, own Tobacco Road Sports Cafe, not only here in Raleigh, but in Chapel Hill and Durham, the one you're talking about with the bull, no bull in Durham. Uh, Alex Amra will be joining us on this show, and also uh, we'll be talking uh, in our segment uh, that normally uh, is uh, uh, devoted to sports. We're going to talk the weather with our good friend Channel 5's <laughs> Greg Fischel. Well, our show, you know why we can do what we do on our show? Because we can do what we do on our show. We Absolutely. do anything we want. We want Greg Fisher on, we're going to have Greg Fisher on. And we do Greg's it. one of your biggest fans, by the way. Well, he's a great guy. And yeah. I think we talked about this, uh, or we will uh, later on in different segments uh, of our program. Uh, I've always wanted to be a weatherman. If I wasn't a broadcaster <laughs> doing sports, I always wanted to do weather. And uh, he always wanted to be a sportscaster. And I think someday, uh, somewhere, uh, we're going to change roles. And uh, again, we can't blame him for the weather. It's uh, it's beautiful in the fall in, in uh, North Carolina, that's for sure. Yeah, well, it's that's what I like about North Carolina. We really have four seasons now. Some of them are short, <laughs> and it seems to go back and forth for a while. Absolutely. But we really do have four seasons, so that's what I like about it here. Absolutely. Yep. So when we talk about the Tobacco Road Sports Cafe, though, uh, we're talking a lot about uh, craft beers. And I know this is something near and dear to your heart, and they have... Uh, at least nine or ten. Uh, we uh, will be talking to Chris Atkins, the brewer, uh, on a future program. But uh, it's just one of those fantastic places. And I got to tell you, the food is also terrific here. Oh, it's good food. So a lot of times people say, well, that's a brewery. I don't want to go there. But mm -hmm. it's food and drink. And both of them are great. Yeah, absolutely it is. And uh, my particular favorite, uh, I, I've been to Buffalo many times. They have a wonderful buffalo chicken sandwich. I always try to get it without the bun. Uh, I kid myself about carbs uh, and not wanting to have many uh, carbs. I just uh, eat the bun every now and then. <laughs> yeah. If you don't eat the bun, you start thinking about the bun all right. the time. So eat the bun to get it over with. I right? know, you're right, because I'll always put blue cheese on it anyway, so that, uh, you know, kind of substitute the calories. Have there. you been to, it's not what you eat, it's when you eat a lot of times and, yeah. the, and the quantity of what you eat. So there's nothing wrong with having some of it. Maybe cut it in half and save half for the other time, but eat the bun with it. But have you ever been to the Anchor Bar in Buffalo? Ah, uh, yes, I have. That's, a, that's, where they, that's where the Buffalo wing started. I guess, That's right? right, Tony yeah. and Teresa, uh, the two owners yeah. back in the 50s. You know the story about No, I don't, wings? but I think everybody likes Well, that. it's funny because they had a busload of senior citizens that were uh, traveling through Buffalo on the way to Niagara Falls okay. uh, to visit the falls, and they came late on a Sunday. And I think as Alex will be able to tell us, being in the food business uh, as well as uh, the, the, the brewery business here at Tobacco Road, sometimes you're a little short of supplies. And uh, it was a busload of about 40 or 50 uh, people, <laughs> and they didn't have anything. Now, in those days, they used to chop up their own chickens into different pieces, you know, the breasts, the legs, and the wings. They would always throw the wings away because they would never use it, or at least put them aside and never serve them. So all they had that particular Sunday night Bunch of wings, huh? were wings. So uh, Tony just said, hey, you know, I'm going to think quick. I'm going to throw these wings in the fryer, put a little hot sauce on them, and that's how buffalo wings began. Yeah. That's, That's amazing. Story. And how long ago was that? Was a long that time was back, that, I think, in the early 50s, yeah. early to mid 50s, because, uh, you know, the anchor, you talk about the anchor in Buffalo. Uh, one of my favorite places is, uh, and I stumbled upon this about 25 years ago, was Gabriel's Gate on Allen Street. And I'll tell you, when you talk about wings, Alex has got some great wings here at Tobacco Road Sports yep. Cafe, too. So it's not just in Buffalo, but uh, that's, where, that's where it originated. It started, I mean, the anchor right? in Buffalo, yep. a lot of people call it a tourist trap. I, I haven't been there in years. Yeah, me either. I've uh, never been. So. But uh, yeah. and another story about that, uh, my good friend Joel Quenville, who unfortunately was recently fired as coach of the Chicago Blackhawks, uh, I just saw that. He, I was going to ask you about yeah, that. He, yeah, uh, he and I were there with several other Whaler players years ago. We went to the Anchor, and I've never seen anybody do this before. You know, you have mild, medium, hot, suicide, <laughs> and, well, I don't know what, you know, that, that fourth category, though, of suicide wings, 
Joel Quenville ordered 12 of those, of the put them on the table, the suicide, and he ate eight of the 12. Yeah. I, I took one to my lips, couldn't even do it, just the heat. Burned your hands a lot of times. Burned your hands, yeah. and in my eyes, yeah. I was starting yeah. to tear up. I don't know how he ate eight suicide wings at the anchor. That's, uh, yeah, he will be known as the second winningest coach in the NHL, not for his prowess as a suicide wing yeah. eater, but he did put away eight suicide wings that particular evening at the anchor bar when the Whalers were going to visit the Buffalo Sabres. It's always funny what they name their most hottest wing. There's a place in Apex where our office is called Apex Wings, and they have one called the Sharon Harris. And Sharon Harris is a nuclear <laughs> power plant, so we never come close to that. It's, uh, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. uh, it, it, it's crazy, uh, but it's going to be interesting, you know, to uh, as we expand uh, this show, uh, we're not just going to be talking, like we say, about wines. We talk, hey, and we can't forget our good friends at the Apex Cigar Lounge either with Jeff and Rob over yeah. there, uh, the uh, fine uh, Dr. Jeffrey Schlager, who, by the way, on uh, future programs is going to be providing me some information, and I'll be doing a little feature that I know you wanted to come up yeah. with called uh, Caton's Corner, and we'll talk a little bit about, in detail, something about cigars, uh, in detail, different aspects of smoking. Well, how do you smoking. know, you know, if you haven't smoked one or aren't, aren't smoking a every single day how do you really know what's a good cigar and what to look for and are you getting ripped off that kind of stuff you're going to do a bunch of segments on that then i'm going to do some they're going to be about two or three minutes long each one and Absolutely. i'm going to do some on the proper wines and the proper beers so i'm going to be doing alcohol you'll be doing a cigar i so think and then are we going to ever switch this i mean i think i'm getting the short end of the stick here <laughs> that's what <you> said. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway chuck you know let's talk about your chicago guy one more i mean chicago won three stanley cups under under this coach absolutely and great teams uh, i remember they beat my bruins one year and it didn't make me happy so uh you don't become a bad coach overnight. No. It's, a lot of times it's about the, the ownership and the general manager is not keeping the right players or not drafting the right players. That's not the coach's fault. No, you're right, Pete. And I think in, in hockey today, as a lot of fans may not realize, you're looking at a salary cap and a yeah. hard cap. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's somewhere right now in the mid 70s. Lots of teams don't spend 70 millions. 70 million. <laughs> that's that's right. Million uh, the dollars. floor. Yeah, that's right. And the floor is about 58, 59. Well, the yeah. Blackhawks have always been a high cap team. I yeah. mean, uh, listen. I mean, about 20, 25 percent of their salaries taken up by two players, yeah. Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taves. That's where you get in trouble. And, and that's right. Yeah. So when you have a Stanley Cup winning team and you have guys coming up for contract renewal, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're going to have guys that uh, are going to want to be paid, and you can't pay everybody. I mean, it sounds like 70-some million is a lot of money. Yep. Well, it goes pretty quick when you're paying $11 million a year to both Caves and Kane. There's 22 right there, yep. and you're looking at a roster of 25, 26 players that you have to have under contract. So that's one of the uh, uh, death knells, so to speak, when you win, when you're successful, and when you uh, have players that uh, are, are up for contract and, and that's a time thing and the Blackhawks have had to endure that yeah. and I'll tell you what coach Q uh, has had a 10-year run and as we said earlier uh, coach uh, he's the second winningest coach to Scotty Bowman whom we had we on this program so we got to get coach program. Q on then yeah we got to have coach Q on he's a you great know. guy now, how old is he uh, he is uh, uh, I want to say 60 okay 60, 60 years old uh, you know, if I was a team that wasn't quite as good as I, sh I thought we should be I'd go out and get him right now well he's a guy that's had a great yep. reputation I mean he's been around uh, he used to be uh, actually in the Whaler organization not only as a player but as a coach of the minor league team, uh, when we had a team in Springfield, Massachusetts, uh, Joel was a coach. And I always felt, uh, you know, that he got caught in a little bit of a management change because at that time, uh, the uh, Whalers went from uh, one ownership to another, and it was the Peter Carmano Zero in 1994 that kind of caught Joel in between. Right. Uh, he wasn't one of their guys. We know that Paul Maurice. Uh, became the coach of the team uh, instead, right. having been a junior coach in Detroit for the Carmanos organization, the CompuWar organization. So Joel kind of went away. He became an assistant coach in Quebec to uh, Mark Crawford. And as we know, Quebec moved to Colorado and won the Stanley Cup in 96. Uh, he was the assistant coach. Then he got the big break going to the St. Louis Blues and the rest is history. He's done a fantastic job with the Blues and of course the Blackhawks where he started uh, in 2010. Well, we look at any team that wins, all the players on the team become uh, a commodity and ones that are other, a valuable commodity that other teams want. Red Sox this year, mm -hmm. they won't have the same team next year because of that. They have some guys up for free agency that want more than they really, th the Red Sox think they deserve and they'll go. So right. The Patriots will have Patriots every year. Yeah. And so it's that kind of thing. So uh, it's about replenishing the team with the up and comers who are underpaid 
and some of them do real well, and when they do real well, I mean, you got to get rid of them after a while. You can't, you can't manage them all. You yeah, can't keep them all. It, it's yeah. tough because you have to have a great minor league system. You have yeah. to have a wonderful system of drafting, and I have to correct myself. I did say that Joel came in 2010. That is not true. It was a 2008. Uh, he replaced Denny Sabar. It's unforgivable, unforgivable, Chuck. I know. I, you were going to correct me, and I knew uh, well, you were going to. Well, speaking of drafting. Yeah. They're going to draft up some beer for us in a little while. I'm going to do some. Uh, well, you're going you're to taste some too, right? Absolutely. We're going to taste some flights. We're going to. And that to me, when I go to a, a new microbrewery, I like to get the flights of the beer, very small portions. But then you decide what you want, and then you get a bigger one later on, a pint yeah. size. It, it's terrific, yep. and it's all here at Tobacco Road Sports Cafe. We'll be talking to the brewer Chris Atkins. We'll be talking to the proprietor. Uh, one of the three brothers, and I can certainly relate to this. I have three boys myself. They're all, all one of three brothers, <laughs> right? And uh, they, yeah. uh, and I know their goal someday is to work together in the entertainment business. Uh, but they do three different things now. And and uh, Alex and his brothers uh, Brian and Rami are, are three guys that work very very hard, and they do a terrific job. And I'll tell you, not only are we going to enjoy the. Uh, the the uh, beer, but we're going to uh, enjoy the uh, the food because the food is terrific here at Tobacco Road. Yeah, I mean it's it's a great place. Uh, a lot of people don't realize where it is. Downtown Raleigh, really mm -hmm. easy to get to. Jones uh, Street parking is a lot easier here than going downtown. Like really downtown Raleigh, you can there's a parking deck here, which is pretty cool. Absolutely, and they've yeah. got entertainment on Friday nights. Uh, they have uh, a copious number of televisions. Uh, to watch your favorite sport. They have a game room in here too with all the different kind of video games, pool tables, foosball, and my favorite hockey game. That's right. You love that yeah. slot hockey. Yeah, We've got to uh, do that too uh, at some point in our show, yeah. which is the Live Happy Show with yeah. Coach Pete. I'm Chuck Caton, and uh, we're going to... Uh, One more uh, thing. Well, they have some private rooms here, so if you're looking for private events, right. they have really big private rooms. We'll talk to Alex about that when we have them on. Absolutely. Yep. Anyway... I'm looking forward to talking to Greg Fischel later too. And Greg Fischel will be joining us here because the weather is all always clear and we're always happy here on the Live Happy Show. LiveHappyShow.com folks and we'll be right back. Absolutely. I'm Chuck Caton in Caton's Corner. Now a little departure here on the Live Happy Show. We're going to be talking a little about cigars, the topic thereof. Well today we're going to discuss color and the varying color of a cigar depends on the wrapper, as you might imagine. Uh, it can affect the taste of a cigar as well. I bet you didn't know that. And different parts of the world account for the different types of wrappers that we have. And uh, the two that are the most common uh, to cigars worldwide are the Connecticut Broadleaf Cigar wrapper and uh, those that come from the regions in Nicaragua or the Dominican Republic or Honduras. Uh, now, there are other regions in which wrappers are indigenous, and uh, they are Mexican wrappers, Sumatran wrappers, and the like, and even some in India or China. Uh, now, the Connecticut wrapper boasts two different types of colors of wrapper, uh, of wrapper that is, and uh, that is there is Connecticut broadleaf that is grown actually in the state of Connecticut, and there's also the Connecticut seed, uh, which is imported to Ecuador and will give you a little bit of a, a darker wrapper. But don't be misled. Uh, 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 the Connecticut seed grown in Ecuador could be darker, but it doesn't mean that it is harsher. Uh, it might be a touch stronger, but as for the darkest fermented wrappers, those are the ones that give you that uh, uh, harsher or more uh, full-bodied taste. Now, remember, it's the top of the tobacco plant that determines the strength of the wrapper or the mildness of the cigar. So remember, it's the wrapper that you have to take a look at when it comes to the taste of a very fine cigar that influences also the quality of that cigar. That's your Cigar Primer in Caton's Corner. I'm Chuck Caton. And we are back on the Live Happy Show. I'm Chuck Caton with Coach Pete Deruda, and our special guest in this segment this week is the Chief Meteorologist of WRAL Television Channel 5, the great Greg Fischel, who, by the way, uh, as you take a look at him in the old days, had a little bit more uh, brown hair. Yeah, uh, I had hair, but it's <laughs> and we're going back to 1981 when 
and Mr. Fischel came in, the Lancaster, Pennsylvania native who went to uh, State, Pe I mean Penn State <laughs> University, <laughs> and it's great to have you with us here on the Live Happy Show, Greg. Oh, uh, this is great. I'm, I was so excited to hear that you were going to be doing something like this, and that's great to be one of the early guests. Well, we're we're flattered to have you here, and uh, we will not blame you for Hurricane Florence oh. or any other. Uh, uh, for example, the lightning strike in my house a couple of weeks ago that knocked out my water pump at a tune of twelve hundred dollars. Not his fault, ladies and gentlemen. So you're coming into friendly territory, right, Coach? <laughs> Greg, I'm sure you've got blame for weather in the past, haven't you? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. That's uh, it, it, it's one of the things, like in our field, where if you give somebody a probability. Then they say, "I don't want to hear that. Just, just what does your gut say? What's going to happen? You know." And then if that doesn't happen, then they can blame you. Me. Said this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'd like to know how you got into the business because I know that uh, you have a love of sports. Uh, you are a, a die-hard New York Mets fan. In fact, you uh, have joined us after a sojourn to the Big Apple to watch your team play the last game of the year. But uh, how did you get interested in weather? When I was a little kid, I realized that emotion, weather emotion, was taking up a lot of energy. Uh, I love snow, and uh, I was petrified of thunderstorms. I mean, my dad would sit on the front porch, lightning would strike two feet away, and he'd say, oh, that was cool. I was hiding behind the commode. You, know? <laughs> you didn't have to pay for a water pump. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, and then I was channel surfing when I was in seventh grade, which back then took about a minute. You know, just, And you actually had to get up and turn the thing. And uh, there was a, a show on public TV that was produced at Penn State. And, um, and the more I watched this show, it was like a seven and a half minute weather show. It was all the science behind the forecast. And I just got enthralled. And, and from that point on, that's all I wanted to do. Yeah, that's pretty funny how people fall into different careers, right? That's what happened with you. Yes. Watching TV for seven minutes got you on the right path. Well, you know, and, and you, you never know, but I, I always tell kids when I go to school, I, you know, I pull out my wallet and say, I know this sounds counterintuitive, but I don't base your career decision based purely on the size of your wallet, because if you hate going to work every day for 40 years, all the money in the world doesn't make up for that. Correct. You've got to oh, like yeah. what you do. Absolutely. It's the same in sports business, too. I sure. think everybody that wants to get into play-by-play, -play, whether it's hockey or any other sport, thinks they can start out at, a, at the top, but it's a little bit different because you gotta, you really have to pay your dues. And uh, you did, but not for really a long time. I mean, I think you were so talented. I think you, you probably feel quite fortunate that oh. I think you only worked one or two places very briefly before you came to Channel 5. That's right. And I never thought I'd be on TV. I mean, I saw myself on TV in college, and I thought it would be a public service to stay out of the business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> well, I don't you know. disagree with that. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, but Greg, back in the day, the yeah. weatherman wasn't a real meteorologist. Right. They were just guys that read the weather. Yeah. And so I think you're one of the, the forefront there in, in this area, one, one of the guys that basically started that, and then you guys built a, a tremendous team at Channel 5. And I, and I think I lucked out in that regard. If I was graduating from college today and trying to break into the business, I think it would be harder. But back then, like you said, having a meteorologist on staff at a TV station was a novel idea. And so... You know, it just so happened that I was born in the right year, so that timed out right. You know. And you know, it's, it, it's funny because we don't think of this, but I read in your bio somewhere that you are also certified broadcast meteorologist, the first man to reach that distinction, and you actually helped formulate a 100-question test right. for those youngsters and uh, those uh, who wanted to enter the profession after you. Tell us a little about that. Well, I, I got on the AMS broadcast board, and literally about, about a month later, the head of the board said, how would you like to chair the committee to develop a certification exam? Because we didn't have one. All, 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 all you had to do with, to get a seal was to mail in three consecutive days of air work, <laughs> and if you looked like you knew what you were doing, you got the seal. And if it was cloudy, you could predict rain. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so... You know, I, I said, okay, you know, I'd, I'd love to help do this. And there were so many people on that committee that were so helpful and equally deserving of being number one. And that was their way of thanking me for chairing the committee. But I always tell people that there's nine or ten other people that could have just as easily been the first one because they helped just as much. Greg Fischel is our guest, and uh, I'd like to order some of the, you remember some of the questions that you formulated for this uh, exam, uh, like what is the definition of dew point or uh, something of that, that nature? They, they were in all sorts of different categories, but like one of the more technical science questions was, uh, I'll, I'll try to make this short, but... So I can understand yeah. it, the coach can understand it, okay, thank you, we appreciate it. No. <laughs> <laughs> that if you have two... Um, 
two surfaces, if you will, will, where everybody or every place along this surface has the same air pressure. And so you have two of those surfaces. The distance between the two of them is proportional to the temperature of the air between them. So if they're really far apart, it's warm. If they're really close together, it's cold. And you can use that for rain snow line forecasting and all that. So we just wanted to make sure that people were familiar with that concept and how to use it. Bob, I, I never thought about that. So there's much more to it. Let's talk about the evolution of the technology of meteorology because uh, uh, I know that uh, back in, I believe it was early 1982, and this is a guy that I'm sure you knew a lot about, John Coleman. Oh, yeah. Uh, from WLS in Chicago originally. Uh, left his position to start what was probably seen at the time as an outlandish idea, just <laughs> like the just like my friend uh, Bill Rasmussen, who used to work for the New England Whalers, left to start this outlandish idea called the Entertainment and Sports Programming Network, mm -hmm. known as ESPN. And uh, John Coleman started what uh, became the Weather Channel in 1982. And that was about a year after you joined Channel 5. You ever have any uh, thoughts on, uh, A, did, was that going to work, or B, you would want to work with them? Well, it, it's funny. My first job in Chicago, where I worked for a private company, but they were using WLS's equipment, every night when I went into work at 2 in the morning, John Coleman was five feet away from me. Oh, he had a <laughs> tremendous voice, didn't he? Oh, Remember my gosh. Him, that old deep... Uh, this is John Coleman. Yeah, it was yeah, almost on the network. And I was forecast there. for some of my favorite towns. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing, is that he would come in at 7 in the evening and do the WLS local weather. Right. Then he would stay all night and do Good Morning America. Right. And then he would work four additional hours to continue setting up the Weather Channel. He was working 18-hour days. Now, you he know. had to get financing for this at, at yes. some point, so I wonder how that all happened. Uh, I, I don't know the insides and outs, but... The only thing I know is there was one time when I was told I was allowed to tap into his machine that got satellite pictures, but they didn't tell me I, I could do it in the middle of the transmission. So one of the pictures he was going to use on Good Morning America when I flipped the switch had a big voltage drop line right across the middle of it. <laughs> and when he yelled at you, it was like God yelling at you. <laughs> oh, my God. I can imagine that. Greg Fischel, our guest, uh, Chief Meteorologist uh, here in Raleigh at uh, WRAL Television. You work with some great people. Oh. But you know, not only that, uh, but you also have... Uh, a love for sports. Now, we kidded a little bit about uh, the New York Mets, uh, <laughs> your long suffering. We won't talk about uh, uh, anything other than maybe 1986 for you. Or and 69. Uh, and 69, yeah. obviously. Well, I don't, I don't remember 69. What oh. happened that year? Oh, the, <laughs> <laughs> well, you're too, too, uh, too young for that? <laughs> and if you believe that one. But you, you had not only a love for baseball, but um, you also seem to have a love for hockey just as much of a love for hockey now, but that wasn't always the case for you, just as you didn't know a lot about me and my love for meteorology. Yes, exactly. And uh, yeah, the hockey thing, uh, I tried to get interested in it. I, I grew up in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. The Flyers won two cups when I was in high school. But other than the puck going in the net, I had no idea what was going on. And I mean, we didn't travel with horse and buggy either. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You're familiar with the geography. So uh, in 2001, and, and you can confirm this for me, uh, we played the Devils in the first round. Right. Got down three games to none. Uh, won the fourth in overtime. Mm -hmm. Went up there and stole one mm -hmm. and got it back here for game six. My kids wanted to go. I said, okay. And so I took him, and we lost, but with two minutes left in the game, the entire arena spontaneously stood up and gave the team a standing ovation for extending the series as long as they did. That's right. And I had an aha moment at that specific time, and I thought, you know what, if I took the time to learn the game, this could really be fun. And so the next year, we got an 11-pack in the mezzanine, which was easier to get back then, and that was the year they went to the finals against the Red Wings. And the neatest, one of the neatest moments of my life is between the second and the third overtime in 2002, uh, Brandon, my son, looked at me and said, Dad, we're in the ESA at one in the morning watching the Stanley Cup Finals. How cool is this? Absolutely. And it was poor Igor Larionov that broke all of our hearts uh, uh, in that game. But, uh, and there's something else that you may not know about our esteemed guest, Greg <laughs> Fischel, and that is uh, he's also a musician. How did you pick up the tuba? 
My mom. Was it because you used toothpaste? <laughs> was that the influence? Or tell me about it. I just like being around the top brass. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, my, my mom and dad would always take me to uh, parades. And I was fascinated by the big sousaphones. And so you could start as early as fourth grade. And so the music guy at the elementary school sat me on two phone books and propped the tuba in a trash can. And that was the only way I could reach the mouthpiece. And so I started playing in fourth grade. And uh, you know I don't play a lot now, but I'd like to sort of get back into it. And uh, my dad always said the tuba is the foundation of the band. And so it's an important instrument. And they were the cool ones. Like, they were cool in the marching band, the big old yeah. horns, right? That sounds right. like John Coleman, too. I know. Right? <laughs> so, and you had a little bit of out of there. Hey, I, we can't thank you enough for uh, being here with us, Greg. Oh, this is and, fun. Uh, uh, you know, we'll probably have you on future oh, programs. Yeah. I hope it's been enlightening for uh, our uh, our viewers and listeners here on the Live Happy Show. So, uh, well, coach. you know, I want one final thing. My dad yeah. is a, he just retired from teaching physics at University of North Carolina at Pembroke, and he said that you were a big part of promoting his science fair back in the day, and he really appreciated that. Mm. Yes, I, I remember going down there, uh, and uh, I think the American Meteorological Society was giving away some awards, and you know, I helped to judge that and so forth. But yeah. Uh, but you know, science and math, and, and just one last thing, especially for women, this has really changed. When I was in college, women didn't feel comfortable being in a math and science field because it wasn't cool. Now there are literally, you know, tons of them, and it's not just TV. I mean, they're going, they're getting master's degree, PhDs, publishing papers, and you know, I think that's great. You know, uh, and I always thought it was too bad that, that a lot of women didn't go into the field because they thought, well, I'm not going to be cool, yeah. you know, to go into math and science. Well, now it's very cool. Very cool. It is. And it's been cool to have Greg Fischel here on the Live Happy Show. I'm Chuck Cake for Coach Pete Neruda. <laughs> Mr. Fischel, thank you very much. And we're going to return in just uh, well, a little bit of a dash. Talk to one of our local experts, and we have a special offer for you on today's show. Call in the next 30 minutes, and we're going to custom design for you an easy-to-understand financial review that will indicate if you're in need of a full-blown financial plan. There's no obligation or cost for this initial review for all callers who have at least $200,000 saved for retirement. If you meet those qualifications, here's what you can expect. First, we'll run a fee report to help you untangle what it's costing you to work with your current planner or advisor. We'll show you how to protect your investments and keep more of your money in your accounts. Next, we'll perform a tax analysis to show you how you could possibly be reducing your taxes and increase your cash flow. And finally, we'll create a customized lifetime income plan using proven strategies and techniques that could turbocharge your retirement income. In short, we'll take the guesswork out of financial planning for you. So, for all callers who call in the next 30 minutes, a comprehensive financial review that we're offering with no obligation. Just call the number below right now. We're back live on location here on the Live Happy Show at Tobacco Road Sports Cafe, and we're here along with Coach Pete and our very special guest, Alex Amra, one of the proprietors of this fine establishment. And uh, I've known Alex for a long time, Coach, and uh, he's a great guy, even though he's from the Mistake on the Lake, Cleveland, <laughs> Ohio. Uh, we in Detroit, of yeah. course, admire you for uh, existing in that wonderful city that uh, uh, has a pretty good Major League Baseball team, but not a very good NFL team. We have an NFL team in Cleveland? <laughs> well, they won a couple of games yeah. at some time uh, in some season. But uh, Coach uh, Alex is fire the coach the other day. Too, and, so. yeah. Yeah. yeah, we don't want to fire yeah. this coach. No. But uh, yeah. no. the, now, uh, we talked a little bit uh, about Tobacco Road Sports Cafe, you and your brothers, yep. Rami and uh, Brian, uh, Amra. Uh, how did you guys get started uh, in this question. business? Uh, really, it was circumstances. Uh, we all had other jobs. Uh, September 11th came to be. I used to be an aircraft inspector. My brother Brian worked for a local company here, and Rami was in college, out of college at the time. I think he graduated, and weren't any jobs. And you know, being the great country that we're in, we were able to work hard. We started a. You remember Amra's, the cigar bar, and turned them into three of these, and hopefully more to come. Absolutely, and I, I do remember mm -hmm. Amra's very well on Glenwood Avenue, Coach. And of course, it is this. Uh, show features a cigar. He, he knows the cigars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been, he's been it, practicing it, it was, for years. It was great. And actually, I met Alex on the golf course a long time ago when he was actually 
uh, slicing the ball to the right, being a right-hander. I was hitting it left. We were in the same cart, and we, uh, if we would have walked, we would have lost 40 pounds. <laughs> but we were in a cart, we had to go up and down the fire way you know, like all the time. Army golf, left, yeah, right, left. That's right. So, yeah. uh, But again, you have a wonderful facility here, but you started in the business. I mean, I, you, you talk about being in the... Uh, in a different business and getting into the restaurant business, what made the restaurant business attractive for uh, you and your brothers? Uh, it was one of those things as a, an entrepreneur you can get into. Like We've all worked in restaurants all the time. We've had an idea. Um, didn't start right away. I started managing here locally. Started bartending, became a manager for a, a chain company, moved to Texas for a little while, and just you know didn't, didn't want to work for anybody anymore. If I was going to be unemployed and homeless again, I, my brothers and I decided that we would be the ones that make the mistake. Yeah. Not somebody else. And not on the lake either. Yeah, no, that's in the lake now. Actually. That's right. Alex Aubrey is our guest, Tobacco Road Sports Cafe. Now, we've talked about, I bragged a lot about the food here. And if yep. uh, people have seen me in here, Coach, uh, you would agree that the food is terrific. We've had lunch in here. But we're going to talk about craft beers. And uh, you have a wonderful brewer, Chris Adkins, who uh, will be on this program uh, at some point. And uh, tell us about how you, uh, the concept of uh, growing from you know, when people say sports bar, they never think about how good the food is. They always think of uh, you know, maybe big imbibing screen TV and big yeah, screen yeah, TVs. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. So the concept here is multifaceted. Yep. Um, it came from just us going to Brian and I. One time we're in the city of Sin. We're in Las Vegas eating at a sports book there. We're sitting there and the food was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> we were looking at it like, man, if we ever do this, like we have to make the food right. We have to do like treat it as a restaurant and just tell people we just happen to have 50 TVs on the wall. And that's what, and we've evolved, you know, we're not very thick headed and can be stubborn, but when it comes to business, you know, you have to evolve and we've yeah. done that. Yeah. It's helped us so far. Well, I, it's, you've done a great job here. I'm, I'm still curious, so you were an aircraft inspector. What kind of, were the big, the big jets? Or the big jets. I actually okay. used to work for the Department of Defense for a little while. Okay. I came, I used to live down east and uh, it was a little boring down there. Is that like Kinston or something like uh, that? I lived in Kinston for a little while. Okay. It's funny you yeah. say that. And yeah. I also lived in Havelock, North Carolina. Okay. I worked at the Marine Corps Air Station in Havelock. <laughs> Came to Stop like before one of those Harrier jets or something goes over. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you call them Harriers. It's funny. The joke was they used to be referred to as Carolina yard darts. For oh, okay. Year. If you're not careful, they could end up in your yard. But they, they fixed them a lot better now. Than <laughs> That's amazing. Yep. And, uh, you know, uh, and, and but I, I love the diversification. I love how you're... Uh, uh, you and your brothers work together because, as I've mentioned uh, a couple times before, I've got three sons that are very close or two years apart. Uh, tell us a little bit about your brothers here uh, and what, uh, how they got involved. How do you actually put this all together? Because, uh, you know, you have to have a lot of synergy. You have to love each other and uh, you have to respect each other uh, and still have that little separation at times because you all have families of your own also. Yeah. Uh who better than the people you've been fighting with your whole life? <laughs> they're never really going to go away. They're my brothers. They're my, yeah. you know, their blood. They're, you know, our, our mom and dad. I mean, no matter what happens, we're family. I want to talk and about your really dad. Helps. Yeah, yeah your really, dad, really helps. Uh, I knew his father very well, a yeah. Marine, and uh, what a wonderful story. And you have a, a tribute to him with his medals uh, yeah, yeah. as well. That, that brings a tear to my eye because uh, yeah. he, he served so well for this country, and I got to know him, and unfortunately he left us too soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pops was, you know, it's funny. You talk about how we are as brothers. Uh, my dad was a Marine, did three tours of Vietnam, came here to this country when he was 12 years old, dropped out of high school and a month after he turned 17, had his, had his, my grandfather sign the paperwork for him and his first tour in Vietnam was in the Army and his last two were in the Marine Corps. And Brian and I, one time we were kids, got in a pretty good knockdown, drag out fight, being <laughs> teenagers like we were. Dad grabbed us both, threw us in the garage, mm -hmm. middle of winter, said, you guys want to fight? One of you needs to come out of this garage. Wow. The next morning, he opened the garage door. He locked us in the garage overnight. Brian and I were huddled up, keeping each other warm in the corner, and really haven't fought since. <laughs> That's a good, way to, good way to correct you on that, huh? Yeah, that jarhead knew how to fix our problems. I'm telling you right now, yeah. tough love. That that yeah. certainly rings true to me. And yeah. uh, you uh, uh, and your love of sports, uh, not only of your family but of sports, and you have to be. Because the Indians were never a great team for years either when you were growing uh, up, and now you are probably in your mid forties right now, yeah. so you don't remember the days of Rocky Calavito or yeah. Vic Wirtz and that big trade with the Tigers was when I was a little kid. But uh, uh, you, you look at the long-suffering fans of Cleveland, yeah. who actually 
uh, in my estimation, should have an NHL team, and that even didn't even yeah. work in the 70s. So, no, But you got the Indians who were lousy for a long time. Yeah. Now you're getting uh, at least some satisfaction. Cavaliers. And one, the one Cavs. Yeah, and, Cavs and, got and, a title. Uh, yeah. Even though, unfortunately, the, the favorite son has left again to go to the Lakers. But yeah. uh, I don't live in Cleveland either. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get it. He's 37 years old. He wants to live somewhere nice and sunshine and put his kid, you know, that's... I get it. I mean, he's a business. I can't. I mean, am I mad he's not on my Cavaliers? Absolutely. But again, he's got a family to take care of, and he's a business. He's needing to run his business. So. All right. Now, Chris Atkins, uh, we're going to have him on this program here in the near future. He's your brewer. Yep. How did you find him? And uh, uh, tell us a little bit about the variety of uh, craft beers that you have here at Tobacco Road. I'm going to leave the variety to Chris because okay. Chris has taught me that I used to think that a double IPA was just an IPA in a tall glass. <laughs> I, am a, I am a Scotch Actually, drinker. I was Chris a math major and I thought it was a triple, but yeah. anyway. <laughs> Chris is teaching me about beers. It's amazing what I've learned, the science behind it and the fun stuff that he's able to, you know, for someone like him and having someone like us, my brothers and I, you know, we, we lay that trust upon him. Like, this is what he does. Like, you know, um, People always used to say, well, you're a know-it-all. I'm like, I am a know-it-all because I'm willing to ask questions, right? Well, I might not know the answer, but, but I'm willing to pick up the phone and call somebody that does. Yeah, that makes right. me a know-it-all. And Chris is, you know, we, we let him do his thing and he, you know, trial and error. He'll pull beers out, do different things with them. Eh, toss, yeah. do something else with it. It's really, really an interesting, it, it's chemistry. It's awesome. I so you guys it. have a pretty good relationship because yeah. um, you know if, if if you had an owner who, who basically got mad at you every time you messed up yeah. a brew when you're trying something new, wouldn't it last too long? No, no. Yeah. You gotta. You have to listen. Um, if you're perfect, you're not working. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. You're sitting on your hands. The person that never makes mistakes is sitting on their hands. <laughs> the only thing that we ask, and it's anybody should ask of anyone, is don't make the same mistake twice. Exactly. That makes you an idiot. That's what I tell my employees you know, too. Yeah, well, yeah, that's what yeah, that makes you. Yeah, and yeah. just don't do it twice. And Chris is amazing at what he does. Why don't you sign up to be the coach of the Browns then? Because that, they could use that philosophy. <laughs> the, Browns, the Browns need more than <laughs> me. As a, listen, as a Browns fan, I, I do take a little bit of pride. And I, I catch a hard time from a lot of Ravens fans and Bengals fans. But I just always like to remind them that we created them. <laughs> you are our children. <laughs> so as you win, it's like watching my son get a trophy in, in baseball. Good job, Bengals and Ravens. Well, I'll tell you what, you're right. Yeah. Because Paul Brown, Paul who Brown. Uh, yeah. the Browns were named after, yes, uh, became the Bengals yeah. owner. And, uh, of course, uh, it's, it's a legacy that mm -hmm. uh, uh, you should be proud of. And, uh, and another Brown that you should be proud of, too, from the history books was Jimmy Brown. Because yes, what, a, what a player he was for the Browns. What a running back he was out of the University of Syracuse University. And, of course, I know I'm showing my age in, in talking about him, but he was one of the bright, shining lights, along with a guy that you wear the jersey of because they wear jerseys here on football Sundays yep. at Tobacco Road Sports Cafe, Bernie Kozach, uh, who uh, is anglicized Kozar, of course. Uh, and the last quarterback that we had in Cleveland. Hopefully that ends now with Baker Mayfield, but I think the last good quarterback we had in Cleveland was bait with Bernie Kozar. Yeah, did so. Bill Belichick cut him? Was he the, is, I think Kozar is the one he cut, right? He cut Kozar. He cut Kozar. Yeah, yeah, Kozar was at the end of the career before, uh, I think, Belichick. Before they left Cleveland, Belichick, well, you know, that coaching staff was Belichick, Nick oh, Saban. It's an all-star team. Yeah, it was an all-star <laughs> coaching team that we had there the year Art yeah. Modell. Uh, split to Baltimore. Do you yeah, ever think so. what would have happened if Belichick would have stayed at Cleveland? Can't think that way as a yeah. Cleveland fan, sir. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll spend my whole life thinking, what if, sir? I look forward, man. I look forward. Because I'm a Patriot fan, so I'm yeah, kind yeah. of glad that uh, that happened. The I only thing it. I'm worried about this year with my Browns is I have a couple of wagers with a couple of my people that work here that are fans of the Dallas Cowboys. And all I need is my brownies to have more wins than the Dallas Cowboys. Well, it's year. looking pretty good. Well, yeah, you know, it's good Dallas didn't look, look that good the other night. Dallas yeah, did. It's awesome. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's an interesting bet. It, it is. And uh, when we look at your entire operation, it's not just the football and the the, the people that love it, but it, it's there's a warmth here that I feel every time I come. Uh, I love it. Family uh, here. It is. I've got um, three, two sets of three siblings working here. And one of the sets is about to bring a fourth sibling on. You've met the Hollands. Right. They're here. I've got, there'll be four of them here soon. I've got another family, the Cooks. That There's three of them here. Um, lots of brothers and sisters. A lot it's of a the family. people that I do business with. A lot of the local entrepreneurs, a lot of local businesses I do business with. I 
Most of them are families and business together. We have a Holland that works with us. Absolutely. Parker Holland. Parker Holland. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. The bottom line is it's a wonderful place. And even for a Carolina fan like Coach, uh, <laughs> you know, you've, got, you've, you've done a lot of work with Duke and NC State. You have a place in Chapel Hill as well. So let's uh, see Roy Williams Carolina. up there on the wall. Yeah. So yeah, 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 yeah. All I've been the going to Chapel Hill. That's a nice location, too. Yeah, it's a great. Right next, you know, next to the it's, it's awesome. Yep. It's um, all three places to, like being from a pro city, when we came here, it was not having a pro team at first. When we got here, it was kind of like, hey, what are we going to go do for sports? And then you realize, like, oh, my God, these people are just as crazy as we are. And it was awesome. And, you know, the Hurricanes, when they came at the time they showed up here, was really the perfect sport for this area because it was something no one had seen yep. before. Right? Yep. They, the basketball team here doesn't work because they're watching NC State New Carolina. All the time. Yeah, same with basketball. football. Yep. Same with, you know. But, so it's a well-rounded situation here at Tobacco Road. We thank Alex Amra. I know you're going to be let's, visiting uh, with us. Let's have him back on for another segment. Let's take a break and have Alex on for one more segment. We will segment. do that as the Live Happy Show continues. Well, Coach, I want to talk about some of our friends here because we couldn't do this show without the fine folks at the Apex Cigar Lounge at 1510 North Salem Street in Apex. Jeff and Rob have a an old converted farmhouse that they made into a very comfortable cigar lounge. Well, it's incredible. It. It's a nice place. It's tremendous. And they've got the best of the boutique cigars that you'll find, and all of the big-name cigars. Yep. But the atmosphere is great. You can come in and watch sports. You can come in and watch whatever you would like to watch with the camaraderie of others who enjoy fine cigars. What I like about those guys is you can go in and tell them what you're looking for, what you want to have in your mouth, so to speak, and they'll find a cigar perfect for you. Absolutely. Their yeah. humidor is second to none, not only in North Carolina, but across the United States. So remember to visit our good friends Jeff and Rob at the Apex Cigar Lounge. They're at 1510 North Salem Street, Apex, North Carolina. The matchmaker between you and the perfect cigar. Well, back by popular demand is Alex Ombra with Coach Pete. I'm Chuck Caton, the Live Happy Show. Thanks for being with us here. And again, uh, we will flash the phone number on the screen and uh, also our uh, email. Uh, so you want to get a hold of us? Uh, you'll be on the live. If you want to be in the live studio audience, right. we have when we when we film on location many times. We're this early today. We're filming before in a restaurant. Uh, by the way, it gets busy around eleven o'clock, so we're filming early in the morning here. So I don't think anybody wants to be in the studio audience early in the morning, Chuck. But, no, uh, that's right. But the noises you hear, we're really here on location. The brewery is, is pumping right now. They're getting the beer ready for later on today, and uh, it's just a great atmosphere. But I want to talk with Alex about one of his other locations. And the, my favorite one really is there. It's the Durham Bulls ballpark yeah, one. A lot of people's favorite yeah, location. Yeah. Yeah. What, 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 how did that come about? You know, uh, tell us uh, how successful it's been. Man, it's been, you know, like anything else, uh, hard work. Um, yeah. Mr. Goodman, Capital Broadcasting Properties here, used to come into our first location. Our first location had a radio booth in it. Around the corner there, we used to do 99 The Fan Shows. That's and neat. he would come in and have lunch. And, he's, and one day, just got to kind of talking. I'm like, you know, you got that beautiful building out there in left field. He's like, why don't you brothers come take it? I'm like, well, we're kind of, he said, I looked at him, I'm like, well, you know, we're broke. He's like, well, like my brothers and I did this on our savings. We did. We did it on our savings and credit cards. Yeah, yeah. And he said, oh, we can work through that. And we went and met with him and, and Michael and his sons again. He worked yeah. with his, you know, his sons. And that was the first time in my life I got to hold a check like that for like all of 10 seconds. <laughs> and we did it. We did. We did. Trump. They were amazingly helpful. You know, you, people like people like that. That, you know, there's there's all kinds of different people in this world. You have the landlords that that look at the cake and want to eat it all for themselves, mm -hmm. and yeah. you have people like the Goodmans that look at the cake and think to themselves, well, how can we make this a bigger cake for everybody? Mm -hmm. And in the years that we've been there, like we've just expanded our patio there. We've got garage doors. We're getting ready to put in a little beer mm -hmm. garden. They've been amazing. The beer garden's a good idea. Yeah, they've yeah. they really, really have been amazing. You know, what's interesting is that whole development uh, with the Goodmans, yeah. uh, the, the Lucky Strike tobacco. Uh, I remember my uncle used to smoke uh, Lucky Strikes back in the, uh, the well, Back day. in the day, Chuck, when I was in college, that was a dump over there. It was. They did yeah. a great job of yeah. coming in and renovating that yeah. beautification project 101. It's, it's yeah. uh, a lot of people copy that same model now in other cities. Yeah, yeah. and I remember before Alex uh, was in left field with Tobacco Road Sports Cafe, uh, I remember the first, uh, the <laughs> Fox 50 field. building yeah. in right yeah. field reminded yeah. me with Durham Bulls yeah. Athletic Park, a lot of Camden Yards yeah. in Baltimore yeah. with yeah. that big warehouse building in what, right field in Baltimore. One of my chefs said to me, he's like, when we were opening it up, he's like, what are you going to do out here when somebody's having dinner and a home run ball hits their table? 
and they go on Yelp and complain. And I just started laughing. I'm like, that's great. 99, yeah, it's like 99 percent of the people that see that on Yelp are gonna go, a home run ball hit their table. <laughs> I know. I know. It's, it's amazing. Well, I, yeah, we, you know, our kids get well, good. You should be paying attention when you're out there. Yeah, anyway, right? and you should. We have signs. You need to pay attention. Well, you need to provide yeah. them with left and right-handed baseball gloves so they can make the catch. And uh, uh, I think they're better off some people without the glove. I think they think the glove really helps. Some just people dark. just just get out of the way. Now, yeah. if you hit the ball, you win a free steak. I guess you can just right. hit the steak with the ball. What do you win that? Yeah. <laughs> That's I remember cool. the first, you know, a funny story I tell is a week before we opened that location, the Tampa Bay Rays came to town, and they were doing batting practice, and they were doing it before the game. Uh, Evan Longoria hit a ball that was actually still climbing when it hit our building. It was, wow. it was an amazing shot, but one of the Bulls single-A players, obviously who hadn't been to Durham before, they were taking batting practice, hit the bull during batting practice, and the only people to cheer were the Tampa Bay Rays because they all had been through Durham and, and understood knew. that hitting the bull meant a free stake. Yeah. You should have seen all the minor, minor league kids looking at him like, why are they <laughs> clapping? <laughs> and it was like, that's awesome. Like, it was a free great. stake. It yeah. doesn't say where, it doesn't say which one, but you get a free stake. Yeah, 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 right? it, it's amazing uh, how the uh, the lore, the Durham Bulls themselves, I mean, you're yeah. latched on to a, a wonderful, uh, you know, in hockey, it's the Montreal Canadiens, in baseball, it's the New York Yankees yeah. or the Boston Red Sox. And in the minors, it's the Durham Bulls. The movie, yes. uh, Bull Durham, Durham. Uh, has, has made it That was it in so the old wonderful. park, yeah. right. which uh, we used to go to that one, and we'd, uh, we'd have to flip a coin, my buddies and I, to decide who was going to drive over there, because our car usually got broken into oh, yeah. in yeah. the game. That was a rough part of Durham over there, so this is a better part of Durham, too. What, what was in that building before you guys moved in? Nothing. Was that, that was a, a, new, that was brand a new, new building. It was okay. a brand new building. Yeah. It was empty, and um, fortunately for us, Mr. Goodman had a, had a lot of interest in it from chain restaurants. And that's not what you know. Yeah. That's not what works around here. And yeah. we just you know uh, who was it? Who was the old UCLA coach? Wooten. Yeah. Yeah, John said Wooten. No, John Wooten yeah. said there's no such thing as luck. Luck is when opportunity meets preparation. Yeah. You make we your own luck. We were prepared to do it. Yeah. And the opportunity presented itself, yeah. and we made our own luck. And well, we've uh, have a company event out there. I did it this year, right there in your left field. Uh, dining room basically or outside out on the patio <laughs> really nice really fun too yeah. uh, i mean it's the uh i like it better than going into the ballpark it's bathrooms are easy to get to yeah. food's better yeah <laughs> and when it's time to leave you get out quicker yeah. <laughs> i, I should stay at the hotel right next door so i don't have to worry about it i'm <laughs> glad we were talking about beer and then happy you remember the 17 inning uh, unc nc state baseball game i remember them when that happened remember when that happened yeah, yeah. yeah the durham bulls athletic park <laughs> stopped serving adult beverages and food in the seventh inning everybody served. ran over to you guys yeah it was great <laughs> my kid got a new bike that week <laughs> <laughs> That's right. They cut off in the seventh they inning. They cut off in the seventh yeah, inning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, when you talk about uh, obviously uh, the alcoholic beverages and the uh, adult beverages, yeah. shall we say? Let's talk about the food, though, because again, I wanted to uh, give a plug to your chef and your uh, the whole operation because I I can't overemphasize because not everybody goes to baseball games. You know, in the winter time, they go to the deep pack yep. Durham. Uh, performing Arts Center, and you get a lot of uh, traffic yeah, off place of that. Too. That's a good yeah. And it's all about the food because you have a different clientele, and they want to get uh, uh, and and they want to be served efficiently and with quality. Yep, um, it works. Chef has done a great job. Um, the fact that we make everything really helps. People still don't believe yeah, that. Yeah, like talk our, about our, that. Our, our nacho chips. Heard. So when you order the nachos here. Okay. Um, a lot of people say, oh, your chips are stale. No, they're undercooked. <laughs> and they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, they get cooked every morning. Yeah. Right. And we do. We make our own nacho chips every morning. Down to the chips, we do that. And it and it helps. It, it helps you being able to, like with allergies, our menu, you can go online, click your allergens. Our menu will refresh itself oh, that's and neat. tell you what you can order yeah. and what to order minus what, what to ask for so you can have something that fits your dietary needs. Mm -hmm. The nice. fresh food concept is amazing. I mean, that's good it because uh, you know, like the chain restaurants, it's all frozen. It's picture yeah. like a menu with a bunch of pictures on it, right. and, yeah. and it's all frozen. It doesn't look like the picture when you get it. Yeah. Your food actually looks like it, what you think it's going to look like. It good. looks like the food that you make at home, and that's what <laughs> yeah. it looks like, yep. and that's yep. what it should look like. Mm -hmm. You should think, besides someone, I always tell my staff that people can sit at home and eat and drink. They come here to be taken care of. And they come here to be served things that they can cook themselves. Yeah. Every time, things, yeah. I, every time I come here, I, I, you talk about food allergies. I'm allergic to salad because the food is so good. I'm not going to eat a salad here. You get coleslaw. I mean, you know, you do get the coleslaw when you're here. Oh my goodness! How about the hand cut fries? I mean, your fries are awesome. Yeah. My uh, my little girl says one of the best things. She always tells me she'll do it to anybody. She'll walk up to you and say, "I'm hungry for what you've got." 
She loves dipping her fingers. When she comes, if I'm on my way home every day, if I don't take her some French fries, uh -oh. I have a problem. Yeah, yeah. Trouble. Yeah. 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 How old's your daughter? Six. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I remember when my daughter was six. Yeah. Yeah. I used to joke that, <laughs> into baseball reference, I used to joke that I have two base hits and a foul ball. But if my little girl told me to punch both her brothers, I would do it and not even ask her for a reason. It's horrible. It's amazing. I, I, it's not amazing. It's it's. I do whatever she says. How old? How old are your uh, sons? Son, uh, eleven and eight. Eleven, eight, and six. Eleven, eight, and six. Yeah, mm -hmm. a handful. Two. They're gonna protect that. They're gonna foul. protect that. Two base hits and a foul ball. Two base hits. I wouldn't want to try to go out with his daughter like in twenty years. Gonna no, no, she's gonna up. have a beard like me. So I'm gonna start shaving her soon. <laughs> two brothers will yeah. beat him up. She's gonna be stuck with her daddy forever. Oh, oh the middle goodness. kid takes good care of her. Yeah, the middle oh, boy. My, yeah. my, 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 my. That's I'm my Chuck, general. Chuck Gayton, <laughs> Coach Pete, Alex Amra. Here, the proprietor, along with his brothers, uh, Brian and Rami Amra, are the proprietors of Tobacco Road Sports Cafe. And again, three locations. Yep. Uh, we are here in Raleigh, as, as Coach Pete says, we're on, uh, we're looking at the big vats right here. In front here. of the big beer things. All right, how many uh, uh, beers, uh, craft beers uh, do you brew here, different ones? Um, so we have four tanks. We can put four different things in at the same time, but that doesn't mean four beers. So let's take an IPA. So he can brew our IPA, our Brightleaf IPA, which is our most popular IPA. Leave five barrels inside the, inside the tank, add chai tea to it, and now we have two different beers. We have a, a regular IPA and a chai tea amber IPA, or, you know, that's, and that's how I did it. And that's the part that was amazing to me. Cool I thought, yeah, yeah, I thought once we put 30 in there that we were gonna have 60 barrels of Pilsner. <laughs> and I'm like, man, how are we gonna, you know, and he's like, no, 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 no. And here's what I'll do, and it's all like this summer we did a go, uh, a blackberry goes, and we waited as late as we could in the summer because blackberries are sweeter the more sun they get. And it was awesome. He went with a local farmer. Gosh, they, that sounds like me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm losing my dad. Yeah. Losing yeah. We don't play much golf. We didn't get to play much golf this summer. Once a week. But so enough. you're saying, though, but, but blackberries. I didn't so added blackberries yeah. in it. So I think it was yesterday he did, and he'll talk about it. Mm -hmm. Yesterday he had a whole bunch of fresh fruit brought in. And he just dropped a bunch in, in the tank with the beer, and it's really just amazing. So That's one good. tank That's might be good. one type of beer, but he might get three or four different beers off of it. Wow. We're going to have uh, him on uh, the future next week's episode. Yeah, absolutely. Talk about all yeah. that. And that's Chris yeah. Atkins. Chris yeah. Atkins, yep. yep. Uh, and, yep. I, hey, I've, I've got to tell you that uh, time yeah. goes so quickly here. We've got about a minute and a half here. Okay. What would you like to say to the Live Happy Show audience about Tobacco Road Sports Cafe that we did not know? We know you've got wonderful food, great beverages, tremendous televisions, including that That's large TV there. behind yeah, us here, there. which is uh, how big? Uh, I don't know. What is their set? <laughs> really okay. big, Chuck. Oh, I yeah. You, huh? yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah you got me. They're, three, they're nine 60-inch TVs. Nine, put six, together nine and it's pretty six, awesome nine, yeah we can make it nine different tvs we can make it one big tv we can make any four tvs a set of tv it's amazing uh, technology has really really gotten really amazing but what is it that we don't know about it that you want people to know about this place well tell us about the meeting rooms because i think yeah. a lot of people should uh, know about that it is right? so, and, yeah. and that's why we moved for those of you that remember our old location off of glenwood avenue this is why we moved we used to have a lot because of the fresh food people wanting to do events with us and we really couldn't do them the place wasn't that big so an opportunity presented itself here, and we took full advantage. We added the balconies, we ripped everything. These rooms, this side of the place was destroyed. We added the bar, put a room in above the brewery, and we do, we've done weddings here. We had a Wolford group in here last night. And they were pretty excited. They thought they had you boys at yeah, Chapel was, Hill. Yeah, they, they got you last year, I think. They were playing down in Wofford, too, yeah, which yeah, down yeah. in Spartanburg, South yeah. Carolina. Yeah. yeah, so you had a big uh, fan big club Big events, there, right? we have a lot of fan clubs that come in, a lot of really wild, crazy, you would think. Um, I would What's the that, maximum uh, number you know, of people you can have in your room here? You got, you got, you got pretty I big could go anywhere here. from 15 to about 300. Well, right, and so we've had good. events that have taken the whole place That's that have done about 800 people in wow. these events. So. Okay. My yeah. last question to you is Michigan or Ohio State? <laughs> Come on, Chucky. <laughs> you guys haven't beat Ohio State in how long? Michigan fan. <laughs> yeah. Jim Harbaugh, two more wins than Brady Hook for all that oh money. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I oh, oh, big blue. A terrible oh, can of worms. Oh, oh big blue. Terrible can of hey. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us, Liv. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Coach, Coach Pete, Pete. See you, man. Yeah, you too. wonderful individual. Chuck. Both you guys. And uh, hey, uh, we're going to start enjoying uh, good times here because it's all about uh, living happy.